Whenever people are incredibly ill, inevitably some people say, oh my god, I was so worried it was cancer. But how do you actually know what are the early signs of cancer? And how do you know what are the signs of different kinds of cancers, for example? Now this video isn't meant to scare you, but is meant to be educational. And many of the cancers that we have today, the primary ones that are killing many of us, are chronic diseases in nature, basically. Because you look at the statistics, most of the people are getting these towards that second half of life. So the pathological and the physiological processes that lead to it are developing for decades before you ultimately have symptoms and can potentially get sick from it. So let's jump in. We'll talk about what are some of the early signs of a very common kind of cancer that I see. And from there, we'll talk about research on two interesting formulas used in adjunct care in China that have real research behind them. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Alex Hine, board licensed doctor of acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine and author of the health book, Master the Day. So let's jump in. I had a patient come in one day, tell me the story of basically how his father died. And what he said to me was that, you know, my dad ate a terrible diet. He just ate pasta all day. He was an Italian guy who never ate a vegetable besides a tomato. He never really ate anything healthy besides meat and pasta. And in general, this guy had bowel problems his entire life. He'd go to the bathroom like once a week. Never went to a doctor his entire life, but then at 70, suddenly was diagnosed with colon cancer and he died not soon after. So that's why I'm so scared of my symptoms potentially being cancer. I wanna make sure these GI symptoms are actually something that are not life-threatening or serious. It's easy for you to jump to conclusions and think, if I have any kind of chronic symptom, that it's cancer. That is thankfully typically not true, but for many people, it's good to know when you should see a doctor and when you should think, you know, these are actually quite concerning symptoms. So I thought I would share six of the primary symptoms here. The reason I share these six symptoms is that yes, they are evidence-based research that you will see in your doctor's office, in your GI's office, in your oncologist's office, but also these are actually the six signs that my patient mentioned his dad had for decades and never sought any medical help for. Sign number one is changes in your overall bowel habits. Sometimes people get alternating stools, diarrhea, hard stools, thin stools, right? Stricturing, there's a narrowing of the intestines or colon that's going on, that's causing change in the actual physical shape of the stool. And where is this coming from and why is this important? Bowel obstruction or narrowing in this way can be due to a tumor growing inside the colon, which basically partially blocks it or narrows the passage. So changes in bowel habits like diarrhea, constipation, or narrower stools are basically a result of the tumor actually physically disrupting your body's ability to get rid of that waste. Sign number two is rectal bleeding. There can be lots of benign causes of rectal bleeding. None of these signs and symptoms on their own indicate cancer, which is very important to remember because I know what the comments beneath this video are going to look like. You can have hemorrhoids, there can be inflammatory bowel disease, a person can have all kinds of issues that cause bleeding that are not life-threatening and are not cancer. Keep that in mind. But why is this indicative? Bleeding can actually happen from tumors themselves. Colon tumors often bleed, which can lead to blood in the stool. Depending on where the tumor is located, the blood may be bright red from tumors near the rectum, basically near the exit, or they can make the stools appear darker if the tumor is further up in the colon, so it's more dried. Sign three, abdominal cramping or discomfort. The majority of people that come to me with this, AKA 99.9%, .9 just have IBS if they have abdominal cramping and discomfort with bowel movements, usually the result of either a really bad diet over a period of time or the result of high stress influencing the nervous system, which affects the gut. But in this case, it's different. This is important because there may be inflammation and irritation going on in the intestines, whether it's the presence of a tumor that irritates the intestinal lining, causing abdominal discomfort, cramps, or bloating, or the tumors can actually lead to bleeding as they're disturbing local blood vessels within the colon or the rectum. Sign four, the persistent urge to have bowel movements. Most of the people that come in with this, they just typically have IBS. If it's more than a few bowel movements a day and it is nothing scary or life-threatening. But in this case, let's talk about why this is happening. The incomplete evacuations or persistent urge can be because tumors interfere with the normal functioning of the colon and make it hard to have a complete bowel movement, leading to this sort of persistent urge, almost like there's a traffic jam in your intestines and the body's trying to get it all out effectively. Sign five, fatigue, weakness, and anemia. Of course, lots of people have fatigue, <laughs> lots of people have weakness, and lots of people have anemia, and they don't have cancer of any kind, and they will not develop cancer of any kind. It's important to understand why it shows up, though, in this pattern. Anemia can sometimes come 
because if the tumor or tumors are causing slow chronic blood loss, which are not always visible, it can lead to iron deficiency anemia. Now this can result in symptoms like fatigue, weakness, or even shortness of breath, as the body is struggling to carry enough oxygen to those tissues. Now, sign six is unexplained weight loss. When you're going through medical programs, practitioners teach you that one of the red flags of cancer is a lot of unexplained weight loss. And let's talk about why that is. Cancer cells grow rapidly, and that consumes a lot of the body's energy. And on top of that, cancer can actually alter your body's metabolism, leading to weight loss even without a change in diet or exercise. Now, a lot of what leads to cancer, whether it's metabolically related or whether it's something due to an underlying physiological process, is predated for decades or by decades by other changes in your body and other symptoms. I've put together a free root cause quiz, which will help you figure out, according to traditional Chinese medicine, where certain symptoms are coming from and which organ dysfunctions we attribute them to. This is something I see clinically every day. The quiz is totally free. It's the first link below this video. Download that and go through that quiz in the next 10, 15 minutes because it will help you suss out where's my acid reflux coming from? Where's my diabetes coming from? Where are those heart palpitations or where's the anxiety coming from? And then we've taken a lot of time to hyperlink to some of my best videos on those exact topics. And lots of these symptoms can be the physiological precursors to the development of certain cancers later. So I would highly recommend checking out that quiz. First link below this video. Now, great. I just shared six scary signs that probably half of you are like, well, I've experienced one or, or all of those in my lifetime, <laughs> right? Many of us have. Just because you have any of these doesn't mean you have or will develop cancer or colon cancer. On the other side, there's lots of overlap between these symptoms and IBS, general fatigue and bowel changes just from eating a bad diet, eating too much spicy food, drinking too much coffee. These signs on their own basically mean nothing but it's something that's important to keep in mind for people who may have something. But what do you do about it? If you are watching this video and maybe you have cancer, there are herbal formulas that have been well studied in China and in the US actually in laboratory settings that are used in an adjunct way when people are already undergoing chemotherapy and conventional standard of care that actually have great promise and they've been shown to do pretty interesting things. So formula number one is something called Huang Qin Tang or scutellaria decoction. This formula is particularly focuses around this one herb called huangqin or scutellaria. Scutellaria is one of the main herbs we use to regulate inflammation in the intestines. When people come in and they have Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, the formulas often have scutellaria in them and they're very effective for regulating the inflammation. This formula is one of my main formulas I use for treating Crohn's disease and preventing people from needing the biologic class of medications. But let's take a look at what it does and why it does it. These herbs in here, basically, I've even been shown to enhance the effects of chemotherapy when people are taking it for their colon cancer. Now, in one study, they found that it helps reduce inflammation in the gut and it protects the intestinal mucosa. Now, another formula or another research piece found that in combination with chemo, it accelerates how much it inhibits colon cancer cell growth and it also reduced the toxicity of the chemo itself. How does it work? It has anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties. So by reducing inflammation in the colon, it potentially slows tumor growth. Formula number two, very famous, also has the same herb in it. This formula is called Xiao Chai Hu Tang, minor bupleurum decoction. Now this formula, basically has been explored for anti-inflammatory and anti-cancer properties for a very long time. Studies show it helps reduce inflammation in colon cancer and improves patients' quality of life during chemotherapy. Similarly, this one works via anti-inflammatory properties and it also helps regulate immune system functioning, which can potentially be beneficial in slowing cancer progression. My advice, for anyone who has cancer is just make sure you do integrative care. Make sure you combine the best of both worlds to give yourself the best shot possible. But these formulas have real evidence that they can help and that they do no harm. Now, as always guys, don't forget, I work with a limited number of new patients in my practice in Los Angeles or virtually via telemedicine. If you wanna reach out, just go to dralexheim.com forward slash clinic. Also, there's some links and our phone number for the clinic in the office right below this video. So you can either call or email us directly that way if you'd like to reach out. And don't forget, before you go, I've included some very, very interesting herbs with even more research on how they can potentially affect cancer cells up here right above.